So now, I'm running a live demonstration of MPLAB Starter Kit for serial memory products. I have a memory starter kit board hooked up to my laptop using the USB port. Here is the MPLAB IDE startup screen. The first thing to do is to select the memory starter kit and the correct EEPROM device within the IDE interface. To select the memory starter kit, click on Tools, Memory Starter Kit from the main menu. You should see the user interface we just saw from the previous slide with the array. The next step is to select the memory device. I have hooked up a 1K bit SPI device on my starter kit board. To select this device, click Configure, Select Device from the main menu. Next, choose the SEEXXX device family from the pull down menu on the right. This represents the serial WEPROM family. Finally, choose the memory device by selecting the 25LC010A memory part and hit the OK button. You should see a selection on the bottom right of the screen showing the device name and the density. Note the size of the array or the buffer contents changes proportionally based on the memory density chosen. Now that you're set up, let's go over the three major functions of the starter kit, read, write, and verify. Let's first start with the read function. You can choose to read either the entire contents of the memory or a specific user-defined set of locations. The latter is particularly helpful if you're only interested in checking the contents of a few key bytes within a large double EEPROM. Let's first read the entire contents of the memory into the buffer. To do this, make sure that the buffer content and entire buffer drop-down options are selected from the read write option section. Then, by clicking the read icon under pro programming operations, the contents of the memory array is loaded onto the buffer that you see on the screen. You should also see the reading done status message displayed on the output window. In this case, the E square is programmed with all Fs. That's the normal way we ship all double EEPROMs. We will look at reading specific locations later in the demo. Now, let's look at programming the memory, or the write operation, the tool's second major function. Here, you can choose to copy the contents of the buffer directly to the double EEPROM, or choose to write a specific user pattern over a selected range of cells. The buffer is a special storage space that is the same size as the memory array and uses the computer's memory to store data. It is a useful scratch pad area for testing and verification before you write anything into the memory. To fill the contents of the entire buffer, make sure that the buffer content and entire buffer drop-down options are selected from the read-write option section. Then, click on the Fill button under the Buffer tab and click on one of the many options available to fill the buffer. I will fill the buffer with an inverse checkerboard pattern. To do so, click on the inverse checkerboard radio button and hit OK. You should see the inverse checkerboard pattern in the array. Now, to write this pattern onto the memory, just click the right icon in the programming operation section. And the contents of the buffer is written onto the memory. You should see the output window display the writing done status message. You can now verify whether the write was done correctly by reading back the contents of the memory using the read icon we just saw earlier. I will first clear the contents of the buffer by clicking the clear button in the buffer tab. This fills the buffer with FFs. Now, I click the read icon in the programming operation section and I should see the inverse checkerboard pattern on my buffer indicating that the memory was written to correctly. This is a simple way to verify. We will see how to use the System Verify feature in the next part of this demo. But first, let's see how to program and then read a selected range of cells within the E-square with a specific user-defined pattern. As is a good practice, let's first clear the buffer as before by clicking the Clear button in the Buffer tab. Next, let's program the first 16 bytes, that's the first row of bytes, in the buffer with a user-defined D7 pattern. To do this, First, right-click on the first row in the buffer. Then, click on the Fill button under the Buffer section. Here, choose the Selected Range radio button on the top. Then, enter D7 in the Data field. And finally, choose the User Defined radio button in the Use Data As field and hit OK. You should see the first row of the buffer is filled with a user-defined D7 pattern. 
Next, to write the contents of this row only into the memory, reselect the first row if not already highlighted by right clicking on it. Change the drop down in the read write option section from entire buffer to selected range. This helps the tool know that we wish to do read or write operations over the selected range only. Finally, click on the write icon in the programming operation section and you should see the writing done status message on the output window to indicate that the write was done. Remember, we wrote only the first row of the buffer into the memory, so the remaining rows must still contain the inverse checkerboard pattern. We can check this by reading the contents of the entire memory again. Make sure that the drop down in the read write option section is changed back from selected range to entire buffer as we wish to read the entire buffer. Next, click on the read icon. We should see that all bytes in the first row contain D7 with the inverse checkerboard pattern filling the remaining rows. Note, to read a selected range, choose the selected range of cells to be read and hit the read programming icon, taking care to ensure that the selected range option is selected in the read write option section. Now, let's look at how the verify can be useful to you. The verify function provided by the starter kit is extremely useful during verification and testing. Quite simply, the verify checks the contents of the memory array with the contents of the buffer. In the event that there is a difference in data between any cell in the buffer and the memory array, the verify function not only indicates an error, but also displays on the output window all locations where there is a mismatch in data. To see this, let's deliberately introduce differences by changing data of a few individual cells in the buffer. To do this, click on the Fill button in the Buffer tab, and then click on the Custom Radio button on the top row. Now, enter the start address as 43 and the end address as 46. Then, click on the random radio button and hit OK. You should see that random data is populated at these contiguous hexadecimal address locations. Now, hit the verify button in the programming operation section and observe the output screen. You get a verification failed message as expected, followed by the address locations where there is a difference in data between the actual buffer and the red memory array. This little test shows how the MPLAB memory starter kit can be used to quickly check known good code in a buffer against the WEPROM device contents. You can also use the buffer to import or export binary hex files. To show you how easy this is, I will import a binary hex file with all BBs that I've already created. All I do is go to the top level menu and select File and then I choose the Import function. Next, I choose my pre-made hex file and click Open. Now all the contents are only in the buffer. Depending on my needs, I could either verify the buffer contents against the actual array contents or write the buffer contents to the double EEPROM. And that's how easy it is to use this tool. You can export hex files for either analysis or archiving with your own custom data or data obtained from the WEPROM using the File Export option. So now you've seen how to perform read, write, and verify operations. Before we go back to the presentation, I want to show you one more feature of this tool, the endurance utility. Many of our customers use microchip WEPROMs because of, the, because of their ability to be rewritten millions of times. This MPLAB starter kit tool offers a built-in endurance utility that lets you run these tests yourself. To get to the utility, click on the endurance button under the special features section. In the endurance utility window that pops up, there are many options one can use. Note that all the read, write, and verify options are continuous, which means the tool continuously performs these functions in an infinite loop. I will click on the continuous write radio button and check the alternate write pattern. Next, specify a pattern to be written from the many options available and click Start. You will observe that the tool continuously writes to the device displaying the number of cycles completed and the failure count. You can run this for as long as you want. However, note that this is obviously a destructive test. Later on, I'll talk about a non-destructive predictive model or total endurance software that comes with each starter kit. This concludes the short demo. Now. We'll get back to the presentation.